Hey everyone, it's Brandy and you are watching Abstract Crafter. In today's video, we're going to do a review, but for something that is a little different that I'm that I'm used to reviewing, and today we are going to review the Unicone, not to be confused with unicorn, the Unicone Art Flow Art Kit. So if you are interested in that, then just keep on watching and we will get into that in just a few moments. Well, hello friends. So we're going to do a little review of this kit that I found on Amazon. So. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know that I've typically only ever reviewed diamond paintings and diamond painting supplies. Um, I've done a couple other things here and there, so really it shouldn't be a huge surprise that I'm reviewing something different. So this kept popping up when I was shopping for supplies for my acrylic pores, and I threw it in my wish list initially it was $24.99 and then it went down to $19.99 so I thought well that's a really good price for everything that's included and we'll open this together and I'll show you and then we'll move everything and test it out and if it goes well which I don't see why it wouldn't uh, we'll stay tuned till the end because I will be giving away a kit and I don't have it in hand so what I'll do is Whoever the winner is, you'll send me your address and I'll ship it to you directly from Amazon. So if you've never tried acrylic pouring, this would be the best way, I believe, to get started. And I have opened everything up. I want it because there's seals on everything. So I wanted to open it up and make sure everything was included before I did the review. And to kind of get an idea about what I was talking about. So it's not a blind unboxing. But the one thing that I kind of struck me about this that I liked a lot was how similar it looks to like a subscription box without, you know, a monthly fee or anything. And I am quite the addict when it comes to subscription boxes. I don't know what it is about them. I just love them. And so this kind of gave me that feel. Plus, I'm much like the majority of the world right now, and I am obsessed with unicorns. So I actually did think it said unicorn art, but once I got closer, look at it, it is unicone art. And another reason I wanted to review this was when I went to search for this on YouTube, not a single video popped up. Not to say they're not out there, but if they are, they're not properly tagged, and I wasn't able to find them. And you know me, I just like to put my hands in there in the cookie jar of unknown products that nobody else is reviewing, so why not? But at least this way, if somebody else is looking at this on Amazon and they want to know if it's a good way to start to see if they like doing this type of art, this is a real. I, I think it's going to be a really good kit to kind of test the waters. Plus they say they're, uh, I think it's premium grade or student grade. Whereas I've been using craft paints, craft acrylic paints. I haven't really dabbled into anything higher quality than that. But this, if might be, you know, if they're as good as they say, uh, I'll know that right off the bat. So I try to keep everything exactly how it arrived to me when I opened it. So as you can see, this box is absolutely gorgeous. It's decorated beautifully, and you could, if you wanted to, you could keep it and decorate it. And I'm sorry, I don't know why when I get closer, it looks like mini blinds are running across my screen. But, uh, yeah, the box is super pretty, and it does go all the way around. So you don't have um, the unicorn art on all the sides it's not branded on every side uh, and the other thing that's interesting to note is that when I went to their storefront on Amazon this is really the only painting supplies they have they don't sell everything separately and it only allowed me to order one at a time because I was just gonna order two and have one on hand for the giveaway so now that we're a few minutes in why don't we actually open this box and we'll look at everything and and then we'll do a painting so when you first open it, you get this, the top of the box is nice and plain and it's got their branding again there and I think that's just gorgeous. 
a, the first thing that I saw was this card asking if I was happy with my kit. If yes, uh, please review on Amazon. If not, then just send them a message and they will try to, you know, right the wrongs that you may have encountered because they believe in total satisfaction. So, and then just on the back, it's thank you for your order. We appreciate your business. Packaged with love, Renee. Thank you, Renee, for packaging this order. You did a wonderful job. And the other thing I really like about this that speaks to the beginner quality of it is that they have this um, little instructions. And I did read through it. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit more. And then on the back side, they have some different tips. I will keep it up here so that you can kind of see. So in this kit, you do get a variety of colors. You get five. You get a pouring medium. Uh, cell-forming silicone, a sample canvas, which is really tiny, and you get five mixing sticks for each color. And they suggest getting some small disposable cups, which I have on hand, and a heat gun or torch, which I do also have on hand. I won't read all of these. Uh, we may refer back to them as we're doing the painting. But if you would like to see, go ahead and pause on this screen, and then I will move the instructions down so you can see the last three. So then when you come up, and there's the last little half of the instruction. So if you'd like to see that, go ahead and pause. And then again on the back, if you would like to read these, go ahead and pause on this screen. And for the last little bit, which I guess I only cut off one tip, but you can go ahead and pause on that. And you can go ahead and visit www.unicone.art.com for apparently tips, tricks, new product announcements. So that is a really nice little handout, but for the majority of people that get into this art, you really got to do it. I mean, you can read all you want, but I read and researched a ton before I did my first painting. None of it compared to actually doing my first pour, and you learn more as you go on. So let's keep moving along. So then this is a little teeny tiny canvas. It's a little six by six. I did prep the canvas with some... Um, painter's tape so that when you pull the tape up it'll be nice and clean underneath in case you want to do something nice with it. So then this is what it looked like when it was after I pull up the canvas and the two little sheets. Um, everything was packed really nicely and we'll start here and this is their little bottle. This is their um, flow formula they call it and I do believe they sell this separately. I'm not entirely sure what sizes but I will link all of this down below and it just says it's created for use with acrylic paint it's professional grade self-leveling formula non-toxic low odor I do not agree with that I thought it stunk quite a bit uh, it will improve the consistency of the paint and it will promote a fluid smooth flow and pour and it also extends the drying time and the reason that's important is if your paint dries too fast it will crack and you'll get some crazing it says to use on can you can use it on canvas, wood, glass, or heavy paper. I have not tried anything but canvases, and I haven't even tried this. So, there is one thing though that there is a bit of a conflict. It says add two parts flow formula to one part acrylic paint, and on here I do believe it says one part paint to one part pouring medium. So that's what I'll start with is one to one ratio. If it's still too thick, then I'll go to a two to one. So. Uh, we got that and this is the silicone I kept it in the bag I did open it up but I wasn't sure if how leak proof it was and it seemed to do pretty good I opened this a couple days ago and they call this their magical cell forming silicone and supreme quality CO and they do say that this is 100% silicone, ideal viscosity for all art applications, highest grade, pure silicone, non-toxic and odorless, clear and colorless, will not stain. Uh, they claim to have no additives, solvents, or propellants. Easy application, you just twist the cap. And then uh, 1000, whatever that symbol is, and I know I just, I, been, I went blurry on you, I'm so sorry. My camera can't focus with all this stuff going on. Whatever that is, it's a small C, capital S, small T, viscosity for smooth flow. Safe for use with torch or heat gun. And they give you an ounce of this stuff. 
which is pretty nice. And that will last a long time. Trust me. So the only thing that was kind of like, ugh, for me, was that this plastic that the paints look like they should have been wrapped in. Like maybe there was all like wrapped like this or something. Um, and it's not even a deal breaker. It was just kind of like a sloppy presentation, I guess. That was like, oh, that's kind of a bummer that it was like that. But it looked like it should have all been wrapped together like this. But it, instead, when I opened the package, it was kind of just laying like that, I guess. Which, again, no big deal. Just wanted to comment on it, just to, you know, as a matter of letting you know. So I'll just show you one bottle. So it says, shake well before using, close cover after each use, clean up with soap and water, colors may stain clothing. And so they do give you the four colors, they give you two ounces of each, which, depending on the size of your canvas, doesn't really go a long way. Uh, that's all I ever seem to buy are two ounce bottles, and I can usually get two to three paintings of like uh, 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 Around that size, I can get two to three out of one bottle, depending on how many other colors I use, too. There's a lot of variables. So they give you this really pretty purple, and I did make little swatches. They give you this dark blue, which, when thinned out, turns into this really be beautiful, like, cerulean blue color. They give you this really pretty teal, and they're all pretty. I don't know why I keep saying that. There is this light blue color, and then, of course, a white. So you have... All the colors you need to make a gorgeous canvas. And last, but certainly not least, they give you five paint sticks. And they do seem to be of really good quality. And they have their little uh, stamping on there with their company name, uh, Unicone Art. And th like I said, they do feel like really good quality. Typically the ones I buy are like pennies on the dollar. So they give you one for each color. If you mix these up to create new colors, then obviously you're going to need more than the five that they provide. But, why don't we, uh, oh, before we get set up to paint, I did want to say I brought in my torch. You can tell that my torch is getting very well used, or loved, used. It's very well loved and used. I cannot speak all of a sudden. And then I brought up some paper towels to help wipe my hands and whatnot and these are the really nice quality for painting they're the viva paper towels a little expensive for everyday use like around my house paper towels are like essential but they absorb a lot and they are amazing to help with paint cleanup and then i do have a cheat sheet that i printed off from pinterest and again I'm, i apologize for those lines i don't know what's going on with them but this just will kind of help with determining how much paint you need. They suggest to choose three to five colors from the set to be used in the pour and two t ounces total will be enough for your canvas. That's gonna be a little difficult too because the, the smaller the amount of paint that you're trying to mix up, I don't know, the harder it is to be able to pour enough out of your mixing cups to be able to use but because of that because this sample canvas is so tiny um if i don't when we get to the mixing paint stage if i don't feel like i'm getting enough i did bring up an 8 by 10 canvas size for us to try so that we could get a little bit better idea i love these little tiny canvases i use them all the time but i typically use them for when i accidentally mix up too much paint but to help with that, I did bring up my scale so we could weigh the paints out so we can get, you know, pretty good results that way. So I have everything I need behind me. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to clear this all up. I'm going to bring in my paint pouring bucket and we're going to test out this kit. I'm really excited. Uh, hopefully it turns out since I'm giving one away and uh, stay tuned so you can learn how to get entered into that giveaway. But, all right, I will be right back, and you'll see a brand new setup, and we'll mix up some paints. Normally, I wouldn't mix them on camera, uh, but this in this instance, I want you guys to be able to see what they look like and how everything goes, since I want to do a full, complete review on this. So, I will be right back, and we'll have everything all set up. All right, so, we're ready to mix the paint. 
Unfortunately, you won't actually be able to see the weights on my scale, so you'll just have to trust me. So the way I think I decided, we will just use this little sample canvas. It's a really good way to test, and I think we can get a really pretty picture out of it. This is a three ounce cup that we have here. So I think all the colors will fit just fine into one of these small ones. It'll be the smallest, tiniest little canvas that I've ever used. I did go ahead off camera and put some giant push pins in the bottom. But why don't we go ahead and we'll mix this up and uh, we'll chit chat a little bit while we're doing that. So we're gonna, I kind of have them in the order that I'm going to pour them. So when I put the cup on when it's in combination with this uh, paper towel, it usually starts out at point one. It's not today. I'm guessing it might be a little bit off because of being in the bucket in the little grooves. So I'm gonna tear it anyway, just because I don't I'd like a clear scale. So it's gonna be a little bit more than um, two ounces, but. I think we'll go, we're gonna get as close to a half ounce of each one as possible with the paint and the pouring medium. So I'm gonna bring it to point two, and then I'll add point two of the pouring medium and that'll allow a little bit of room if we need to thin it out with more pouring medium. So I'm just gonna pour paint in there until it, my scale says point two. And see that's all the paint that you need for point two. So, okay, well, you know what? I think we're gonna go point three, because I want to make sure that all of these colors get a fair shot. And unfortunately, I don't get halves. And see, it already went to point four. So, you know what? Maybe we'll just make up an ounce of each. And stupid scale shut off on me. We'll make up an ounce of each and we'll just put enough in the cups until it hits the two and a half ounces that I'm aiming for on here. And that's a, so that'll be a half ounce of paint. And then... A half ounce of pouring medium. I'm gonna give this a good shake before I put it in and I like to put the pouring medium in right away so that the paint doesn't for some reason thicken on me so I'm gonna try to do this till my scale tells me 0.5 and there are bubbles in it but I think that'll add to it. There we go. And we will wait. We'll mix everything at the same time. But I am going to move the paints over to start with. So I'm going to tear that out. So now we're back at zero. Let's see if I can actually get this one to 0.5. I kind of know where that lands in the cup. like. And I was starting to tell you guys that I just started weighing my paints. And I think it's made a huge difference. I mean, I haven't done a whole lot of paintings on camera, but off camera, I've done a lot. So, uh, I think it's made a big difference in how much waste I have as well. And, um, there we go. Sometimes it takes my scale a little bit of time. Because, like I said, I've been buying small little paints, like little two-ounce paints, so... You know, you go through it pretty fast, and if you, you end up with a lot of waste, then you end up, like with me, like when I was mixing before, when I had mixed too much paint, I'd have to keep putting it on canvases. I, I just can't throw paint away, even at 50 cents and 79 cents a bottle. I just, so then I just keep putting it on more and more canvases, so I have multiple canvases with the similar colors. It just needs a little drop more. And there we go. I love this purple color. And I was going to show you guys. I did the smallest little finger swatches. So this is what the colors will look like. And I think they're going to go together really well. The only one that's not showing how beautiful it really is, is this dark blue. And you'll see that when we pour. Alright, so before the scale shuts off, let's get this going. And I have been doing a lot of pours. I haven't done as many on camera because I'm trying to be as universal as possible wherein, you know, I'm not just doing uh, one one thing. Like, 
with diamond painting. That's all I would do is just diamond paintings all the time. So then when I switch to doing other things, other types of crafts, it can kind of be a little bit of a shock. To those of you that are, have been with me since the beginning, especially, that all of a sudden I'm not doing just diamond paintings anymore. And I've actually taken a little bit of a break from the diamond paintings. Why would that scale shut off on me there? So now I'm going to lift this up to see. Okay, so it did stop at an ounce at least. I really got one color left to mix. That's just me all over the place. So I'm going to tear that out again because that's not cool. This stuff is actually really sticky and it kind of reminds me of when I was just using glue. Uh, Elmer's glue all for my paintings before I switched to Floatrol and I actually just started using Liquitex pouring medium which is pretty expensive but I, I got it like on a really good deal kind of a long story how it came into my possession but I have been experimenting with it and if the video hasn't come out yet there will be a video coming out where I talk about that a little bit all right, so we're all done with that. Now we're going to get to the mixing, and then we'll add the silicone. So that, that's just the way I like to do things. Why don't we uh, get my scale out of here? I'm going to keep my paper towel handy because, as you can see, the blue is already, it's already a part of my skin now. So off with you. Goodbye. And the nice thing about this scale is that it's got a little hanger so I can hang it on my wall because space is limited in my house with all these new crafts I keep trying. So let's just mix these quick and just so that, you know, I can uh, preserve their name since this is a dedicated review to them. I'm going to keep that up. And we may add a little bit more paint after I get these all mixed up, depending on uh, what I think, because these are really watery. But that pouring medium was pretty watery too. So we'll see. I do like to try to scrape my sides as best as possible. Uh, I'm trying to use up these cups. I don't like them because they got these like weird ridges in the bottom that I call little paint holders. So yeah, this is like way too watery. So we'll probably add a few drops of paint. I'm going to weigh the paint as I pour it into the pouring cup anyway. So no worries there. We won't lose, you know, anything in that aspect. But these are way too thin, and I don't think that, I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't like how they're super watery. They shouldn't drip off your stick like that. They should flow nicely. So I'm really glad I didn't do a two-to-one ratio, because that would have been way too thin. And then if you don't like all the bubbles, you can, like, tap it down like you're baking a cake, and that will help some of those bubbles pop but I think like I said I think it'll add to the painting this is probably my favorite part of flow acrylics is mixing the paints and getting them all ready I mean I like the whole thing I can't do a craft unless I like most of the it pretty much all of it like if there's even one small part of it I don't like it's just not fun to me. Uh, so when I when I if I need to add more paint to this, I'll just pause quickly, get the consistencies right, and then tell you what I did to get there. Cause it could take a few minutes, and it's already gonna be kind of a long video before I edit. So, or even after I edit, I should say. I just think that at this state, this watery, they will crack a ton. And if that's the look you're going for, then great. But ah, I prefer that my paintings don't crack. Yeah, that's... They are gorgeous. So look at that teal color, that turquoise color, I should say. It's like a turquoise. It's in between turquoise and teal. I really do quite like all the colors in this particular kit, which is another reason that I was drawn to it. Another cool way they could have went with this kit is just given primary colors because you can do so much with just red, blue, and yellow and just mixing it with either white or black. And they could have, you know, substituted 
the four colors for red, blue, and yellow, and black. You, the combinations for that are pretty endless. With this, you a little bit limited on how much you can really do with it. Um, and just to show you on camera real quick what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a pretty decent squirt in there uh, to try to thicken it up a little bit. So I'm going to do that quickly and we'll be back hopefully ready to pour. All right, guys, I'm back. So what I ended up doing was going three to one mixture, three parts paint to one point part pouring medium because that stuff was really thin. So we're going to go ahead and add our silicone to everything but the white. I don't know why I've just never added silicone or hair oil to white or black. Um, or I'm going to go five drops in each, which is kind of a lot, but I like a lot of cells. So one, two, three, four, five, and a half. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. This is kind of a hard bottle to squeeze. It does not get good drops. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's mix that silicone in. And because of the amount of paint I ended up having to do, um, we're just gonna go ahead and do our big canvas. But let's get that silicone mixed in. And the way I like to do it now is, I almost like to do like a, a circular motion going from the top of the paint to the bottom to try to dist distribute that oil all the way through the paint. And then I'll go in and mix in circles. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five drops, five stirs. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Uh, I don't know if they mean for this, well, that has no silicone, for this to have as much in it as, or to be as thin as it turned out to be, but I personally like for it to run in a steady flow, not like a drip, like it shouldn't look like water coming off your stick like that. So this is still a little thinner, but I didn't want to use up all my paint for one small painting. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do two layers. Lately I've been doing one layer, but I want to make sure every color has an opportunity to uh, appear on screen, if you will. So I'm going to try to go darkest to lightest and just estimate half of what I have in my cup. And I'm just going to set those sticks over there. So then we'll go, uh, we'll go teal. And we'll just, like I said, try to do half. Yeah, and that's just dropping right to the bottom. Typically, you want it to sit on top of the color that you previously poured. Uh, it's quite all right. Like I said, this is an experiment. And hopefully it goes well, since I want to give one away to you guys so that I can get more people to try this. Because I find it super relaxing. I mean, you kind of got to not worry about, you know, you don't like getting your hands dirty, this probably isn't for you. You can wear gloves, but I find that gloves kind of get in the way, I guess, and I end up having to wipe my hands off anyway. So, and then we'll go with this light baby blue. I do quite like this blue color in paintings. I find that I use it quite often. This paint is probably going to be way more than we need for even the small canvas that I or the 8x10 canvas, which isn't quite small, but I think it'll still be a little bit big for that, even. Let's get our white in there. And then we'll just, um, we'll save a little bit for the small canvas, and then we'll just dump everything into this baby blue, or this dark blue cup here. So I want to try to maintain the order that we initially poured in. And 
and then I'll take the leftovers. Sorry, I put my arm right in your way. And we'll just put those right into this cup that the blue was in, the dark blue was in. And there we go. Get that in there as much as we possibly can. We probably won't even need to do, that probably isn't necessary, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Put our stick off to the side. Where are we? Purple. I used a little bit more than half the first time around, so there won't be as many in that layer. And we want to put a little bit into this cup. Because I do want to see if their canvas is good too. And I can feel the pants themselves getting a little bit thicker as um, I continue to add colors into the cups and whatnot. So that's nice. At least, you know, they do thicken up. I think it was just such a shock and maybe those bubbles had something to do with why it was so thick. Who knows? It really ultimately, to me, does not matter so long as you get beautiful paintings. And that's really the goal here. And um, you really don't need to um, use all the colors either. I just wanted to see what they'd all look like together in a painting. They complement each other very well. You know, and there's so many different combinations that you can come up with besides what I've done. My typical way of how I like to do my pour cups is that's what we're going to do is just a standard acrylic pour, flip, dirty flip cup is what this would be called. Just because I think that's going to be the best representation for um, testing this kit out. There's so many other things that we could do, but... I think this will really give us the best idea of how good the silicone is, how good the paints are, the pouring medium, all of that. And I will, at the end of this video, uh, come back with some pictures of what it looks like all dried up. Because this will continue to change as we, you know, keep letting it sit. All right, so we got our flip cups all ready. I'm going to get these cups all moved out of the way off camera here. I have to take my dog to the vet in like 10 minutes, so. <laughs> all right, so we'll just bring both canvases in and flip them both at the same time. Show us some magic. So all I'm doing here is just raising them up so that they're a little bit more visible to you. And for the small one, we don't need as many. I'm just going to move those off camera real quick. Or move that one over. And there we go. That one doesn't need as many. This might not even be enough paint for that small one, but... Generally, I would have liked to have measured that out, but it's quite alright. Alright, so let's bring our flip cups back in here. You know, and if nothing else, if that's not enough paint, we can drip. And I know you're not seeing the whole canvas. But I also did not anticipate doing two canvases on camera at the same time. So there, we got a little bit more. So let's just uh, trust ourselves here and flip. Oh, we've got a little bit of um, spillage, but yeah, and this my cups do not want to sit where I told them to. So let's move that over a little bit. And I can already see some cells trying to form right there. For this little guy, what I'm going to do... Because I only have two cups, I'm just going to do a little flippy like that. Let them sit on there. Give them like a couple seconds to let all the paint slide down the cup. And you can see there, you're getting some cells. So I think if nothing else, the good thing about these kits will be the silicone. Um, the pouring medium, I am not a fan of. You can see how liquidy that is in there. The paints, on the other hand, seem like really good quality. They're very thick I can, and they're satiny feeling on my hands. So maybe with my own pouring medium, they might have been a little different, but that's a different test for a different day. This is a dedicated review to Unicone art. <laughs> All right, I think that's been pretty good. So why don't we... Uh, what I like to do is kind of pull up to the top and pull back. 
and kind of let whatever's left in my cup just flow out around the sides just to make corners a little easier so I don't have because you lose a lot of paint going over over your corners so I'll just kind of let the leftovers kind of drip over onto my corners maybe even onto this canvas <laughs> I'm just gonna set this up now let's flip this cup and see this one I'm not gonna do anything fancy I'm just gonna pull up that might have been a mistake who knows <laughs> let's set that upside down and we'll let that one drip too onto there just for a second we'll let them kind of do their thing and then we'll get all this excess paint off I'm actually gonna set that upside down right down there and let's do a little bit of tilting I can see a lot of air bubbles so I'm gonna do something I don't normally do and I am gonna torch just to pop those air bubbles I don't normally like to torch before I um, tilt but in this instance I'm going to because you can see all kinds of beautiful cells coming up the silicone I use isn't the greatest so I can see we got a lot of like beautiful lines starting to come up and I'm gonna let that go over this is some fast flowing paint holy crap all right and my light is right under that top corner of the canvas so I gotta be careful not to accidentally bump it okay we got over over just about all of our edges there all right and let's come down a little bit and get over that top corner because I kind of missed it and I do have a little bit showing or a little bit around that hasn't been touched so I'll just touch up with what's on my fingers and I'll check those edges in just a minute sometimes I'll kind of take what drips off and move it over to this canvas because I know that didn't get enough paint all right let's see what this canvas did here like I said I really don't think this was enough paint but we'll just slowly get all the way around and quite honestly I don't really mind if this one doesn't get a hundred percent covered we'll do this and then we will um torch again to make sure yeah that probably could have used a little bit more paint but so one thing we can do to remedy that to make sure you know that you get full coverage on that is you can take one of your sticks and I do have a bigger paint stick for the just such an occasion and you can scrape it now yes that does mix a little bit but if you do it just right it won't mix too much but that will make sure that you get everything out of there that you will need so we got that let's take our little baby cup and do the same thing this one is going to be darker because we poured directly into the blue cup so that's why this one is appearing to be darker than the other one because that one had more layers to it as well so let's just try to um, get that paint moving around on there just to help it out yeah there probably wasn't really enough to do this small canvas but it is what it is Sorry, I had to concentrate. I got quiet on you. All right. So. And as far as like the sides, it's okay if they don't get covered. I will come back with just white paint and you can do, you can just touch the sides a little bit like that. That will help. Cause really it's the top that you want to make sure you get good coverage on and I'll just help it out this one isn't meant to be a winner this one's meant to test the canvas quality and it doesn't appear like it has any like 
uh, gesso on it, gesso, whatever, on it. So it could be why it's not flowing as nicely. I could be wrong. I did not look for that information. And I shouldn't really worry too much about my sides. Like I said, I will go back in and paint those, but... Let's just get that last little bit covered, and then we'll torch it. And I'm stealing paint from my other canvas. <laughs> just so that it matches, that's all I care about right now. Alright, then we'll give it a quick torch and we'll let it sit, and then I will come back and show you what has happened. We'll give it, you know, the length of my appointment, my vet appointment. And when I come back, hopefully something cool will have happened that I can come back and show you guys. Something cooler than, you know, this canvas is looking really awesome. But I still do think that the paints were a little too thin for this. So give it a quick torch, let some things happen, and when we come back... You will get to see what happens in, after you let things set. Oh yeah, you can see all kinds of cool things happening in there. Alright, so I will be back, and when I come back, you'll see some way better canvases. Okay, so this is where we're at after I went to the vet and came back, which wasn't that long. It was about an hour, so a little bit longer sitting than I probably would have liked. I would have liked to keep a little bit better eye on it because for as thin as that paint was for acrylic paint it is already starting to dry and one thing I'm noticing is you can see little divots um let's see if I can show this to you in a way you and without the light glaring too much but all those like little spots there are like divots in the paint, which could be fixed by putting on a top coat there. You can kind of see it in where the light is glaring on it. But it looks like orange, an orange peel. And so it didn't really produce extra cells. But with that being said, I am not unhappy. I think the little sample canvas that they provided probably wasn't the best canvas but again it's a sample canvas uh, let me bring this one up because this canvas is a little bit better it's not like top quality by any means and look I missed a corner which is fine but um, it is you know decent quality and you get a little bit better results you got some really cool small cells now if I had stretched those out a little bit we might have got some we got a couple spots where the paint dripped back onto this canvas um and it did seem to you know extend down the sides of the canvas fairly nicely um a lot of times if your paint is too thin when it stretches down those sides it'll show off the canvas uh, more than you probably might want so it did appear to um cover pretty nicely and uh, a few final thoughts before we get into this and before I talk about um, the giveaway here um, ooh, let me turn this a little bit try to cover those white spots that I missed in my rush to get to the vet um, so I did notice you know it was very very thin at first and I made the decision to go three to one paint to pore medium so whereas they recommended they had two different recommendations actually one being um one on one one to one ratio and then their other recommendation being two to one with pouring medium to paint so two parts pouring medium to one part paint i did start out with the one to one ratio of the paint to pouring medium and that you saw was like water and that to me would not make a good painting um, I'm no expert by any means but I have done enough of these to kind of get an idea of consistency when it comes to doing these paintings and what you want in a good painting 
Uh, that being said, I do really like the results. I think the pants are really nice. I think it was the pouring medium. And I would like to do a couple of experiments with um, my other pouring medium that I like to use, the Floatrol. And in some cases, you need to add water. I would like to try replacing the water with that pour medium. The, the I'll show it, the unicone one, this one. I think I'd like to try that. I'd like to try a couple different mixtures. I did really like the silicone, but I did not like the bottle that it came in. Um, when trying to add drops, it would stream out instead of just give you nice little drops. But it was very thick in comparison to the silicone I've been using. I would have liked to see a little bit better cell creation using the silicone. But again, it could have been because the pouring medium was so thin and it thinned out the paints. I ended up using a lot more paint than I, I think was intended. And we're not going to fault the lack of paint on this canvas because that was my fault in measuring. I didn't really take any of that into consideration. Uh, but it looks like it's going to dry to a nice gloss finish. At the end here, I will come back and show you. I think that's where we're going to leave this portion of the review. All the links will be down in the description box if you want to go purchase this. They will also be linked in my Amazon Influencer store if you want to just look around and see what other acrylic pour painting supplies I like and order from Amazon or any other craft area for that matter. There should be a category for diamond paintings, other crafts, and I do have one for just pour paintings now. Okay. All right. So this is where I'm going to leave this part. You can go read my full review on Amazon.com if you prefer. No, this was not sponsored. I bought this on my own. I, they don't even know about me. So, and apparently not many people know about them. Hopefully that'll change now. So stay tuned to the next clip. I will talk, I will show you what it looks like when it's completely dry, give you my final, final thoughts, and then let you know how you can get a kit of this for yourself. So stay I'll see you in a split second with all that fun information. Alright guys, so the paintings have been sitting for a good long while since I uh, did them originally. I have a few final, final thoughts, uh, separate from my initial first, or final thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And I have the details on how you can win this little package for yourself. And I'm going to say right now that if you're experienced in acrylic pouring, you're not going to want this kit. It's not, it's really better for beginners. For somebody that just wants to learn, maybe just wants to do a little galaxy painting for themselves. Uh, it's really not for, if you have your own supplies already, it's not really going to be for you, and I'll, and I'll explain all that, but I, right now I want to get some really good close-ups of what they look like, nice and dry, um, talk to you a little bit about why I think that they are better for beginners, and then I'll tell you how you can win one of these for yourself, uh, one of these kits. Uh, I do still recommend them for beginners. I don't recommend them, like I said, for experienced users uh, if you even have those colors already I have not used the paint separate on their own since because I wanted to wait and see what people thought but I have since tried the pouring medium and the silicone on their own and I have some thoughts about those as well so why don't we get really up close and personal all right so I am outside that's why you're hearing a lot of outside noises but it was just such a beautiful day, and I just thought, why not? Okay, so you can see there that those holes, it could have been because I let it sit for so long without torching it a second time. I did give it an initial torch, but those are from the air bubbles that were in the pouring medium, uh, That and it those bubbles are still there even after sitting for, I think it's been almost two weeks maybe a week and a half but so you can see that there's a lot of pits which would probably be eliminated by simply torching it and then you can see some cells some really big ones and some small ones like these are cool 
And this little spot here, now that was where silicone sat underneath the paint and continued to pool up. And you'll see quite a few of them along the way. Um, so yeah, if you're kind of triggered by holes, obviously I, I apologize, but I mean, you get some really cool cells. This is where I dripped onto the canvas. That's not from the pour. And there's another dripping spot. Oh. Sorry about that. Being outside, you have to be prepared to stop on a dime. So you do get some really cool cells. The colors themselves, they mixed really nicely together. I do like them. Uh, and this was what was done with the leftovers and kind of me scraping my hands on there. But you can see there's a lot more of those. Again, that's where silicone was sitting underneath the paint. And there's one where it didn't actually break through that top layer. So there's probably still silicone in there. I can't tell. Let's see. No, but I did just make it worse. Um, it's very textured. I don't know if you can kind of see that. But, I mean, there's some cool stuff going on, like up in there. You get some really it, cool separation. I like this spot here. And then over here, I like a lot of the colors, too. This one, obviously, was a lot darker because I dumped all the colors into that dark blue. And so just another nice little look at both of them together. Okay, so final thoughts as far as the silicone and the pouring medium. I won't speak on the paint since I have not used that again since. But the pouring medium, I don't like it. I do use it when I, because I use Floetrol and I have tried um, Liquitex pouring medium. I use a 50-50 version of those two together. And I really like the look of that. And that will be in an upcoming video where you'll get to see what a painting looks like with those two pouring mediums and a new technique that I haven't showed yet as well. So what I do is if it's still too thick of a mixture and it won't pour nice and smooth, I'll add a little bit of the unicone pouring medium to thin it down. And I do get very similar results with those bubbles if I don't torch it enough. Um, I'm not a fan of the silicone. It does leave, for being a uh, supposedly higher quality grade, it does leave, like, some of the holes are from the pouring medium, but some of them are from the silicone, like the obvious ones that I showed you, like down here, that look like craters. Since this is a galaxy picture, it kind of goes along with it, like, you know, craters on the moon. I did find that I did like the paints a lot. Uh, the pouring medium itself had a very disgusting smell to it. So that could be maybe I got an old one because it did claim to be odorless. So I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, pretty much every painting I've done with either the silicone or the pouring medium has left some kind of result like this on it. No matter what it, combination I use, if I use a good my good pouring medium mixture of the Floetrol and Liquitex, and then I use that silicone. I just, it, I have not liked the results. It does leave little holes and craters wherever that silicone had sat versus the treadmill silicone oil that is most commonly used in pore acrylics. I mean, you look from afar and they look beautiful. You don't see the holes. And you also have to keep in mind that these are not sealed. They don't have anything over the top of them that could possibly fill in those holes so there's that as well why don't i grab that pouring medium i'm gonna pause you i'll go grab it and i can show you what it is that i'm talking about and then i'll grab another painting in which i used that silicone so that you can see kind of what the results from that are and then we'll talk about the giveaway because <laughs> despite what i'm saying here i am being overly critical because i am trying to do a review for you guys um, like i said at the beginning of this clip I do think that this is a good kit for beginners and it'll get you materials to get you started to see if there's something you want to pursue and to gain better materials. So why don't I grab those couple of things and I'll be right back and then we'll talk about the giveaway. Well, all right, look at this little beauty, huh? So 
if we get up close, you can see all the craters and the holes. And this one was not using the pouring medium. It was only using the silicone. And it, there's those little holes everywhere where that silicone had been under the surface of the paint. And it leaves the little holes everywhere, which is not something I have seen on other ones. It also, right there, where there was a bigger portion of the silicone, it does leave big, like, it's a noticeable crater. Maybe not on such a bright canvas, but, so it does leave some texture and some other things. But again, pulling way far back, you don't notice that. Uh, maybe a little bit down in here, but again, that's mostly the cells popping up. So, if you have something that's a really good resin, if you're covering it with resin or something like that, then it's not going to be that big of a deal, because you'll just fill that in with whatever kind of sealant that you plan on using. Now, when we turn to look at this pouring medium, you can see here that it's got a bit of a froth on it, and you can see the bubbles that it leaves behind. So, again, I don't know if it's just a bad batch maybe but anytime I've used this in any painting those bubbles do seem to may have a big effect on it so there is that um, all being said I'm not disappointed I don't feel like I wasted my $20 I got two beautiful galaxy paintings out of it I still have plenty of paint left I have all this pouring medium and I've used this quite a few times since then it does leave a really nice um, finish on there. It's kind of a satiny finish. It's not all the way matte. So it does leave a nice finish on there as well. It does make the paint thicker. It helps slow down the drying time on it to make them, because uh, if they dry super fast, or if you're using really cheap craft paints, then uh, you'll get a lot of cracking and crazing and stuff like that. Uh, so it does help thicken it to give this really nice soft finish and it does thicken the paint like over time so it's all in all a really good kit and if I didn't think so I wouldn't even bother giving it away if you want to win a kit like this of your own I mean I, I'm not going to deter you if you are experienced in this and you just want to experience this particular kit for yourself uh, there are no restrictions. The only restrictions for this giveaway is if Amazon can't deliver to you, then obviously I can't get the product to you. So it ha I have to be able to send this to you through Amazon. So it's going to be quite simple. You're going to leave a comment down below. Let me know that you want to be entered into the giveaway. Um, I will put dates on the screen of the length of the giveaway. It'll run for two weeks. At least two weeks it might go a little bit over depending on some things that may or may not come up but I will let you know for sure there will be an announcement video on the giveaway I'll use a random comment generator and then I am gonna verify that you are subscribed to me so uh, I don't normally make that a requirement but I am this time because I want to give back to my subscribers specifically the ones that are watching my newer type videos, um, the pour videos, the crafting videos. I want this as my way of thanking you. So it's simple. Again, uh, the dates will be on the screen of the giveaway dates. And when you have to enter it, it'll be comments on this video only that I'll be pulling from. And your comment must say that you want to be entered into the giveaway if you were to win, I will verify that I can mail to you your country uh, if you're not in the United States. Uh, so, and then the winner, once that's announced, they'll have 48 hours to get back to me to give me their address so that I can mail this to you from Amazon. It's on Prime, so you should get it within two days. So, I mean, that's awesome, right? <laughs> uh, and you must be subscribed. I will be verifying that you're subscribed. Uh, if you have your account set to private, all you have to do is take a screenshot showing that you're subscribed to my channel when you send me the email. Um, 
I'll just ask you to verify if I am unable to verify. I don't want you to change your privacy settings or anything like that. You know, we just need a quick verification. Uh, and one thing that does happen from time to time, not that any of my subscribers do this, is that you'll subscribe just for the giveaway. And then if the giveaway ends or you win and then you un unsubscribe, you will be ineligible for any future giveaways. And I love hosting giveaways. I am quite a generous person. I like to share all the fun things that I do. So I'd really hate for that to happen. I don't want to have to disqualify anyone, but I doubt that'll happen. So let's not even uh, go there, huh? So that's it. And that's all you got to do. Uh, leave a comment stating you want to be subscribed or want to be entered. Be subscribed to my channel and we'll go from there. All right, with that, I'm going to let you go. It's been a long video. And with that, I'm going to let you go. Have an awesome day. Have fun crafting. Have fun doing whatever it is that makes you happy. I love you, friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. And good luck.